the year is 1867. Carrie, we don't think you should marry that guy. Ugh, you just don't want me to be happy. Of course we do, Carrie. It's just that that guy's a drunk. Drunk off our love. No, Carrie, he's literally a raging alcoholic. L look at him. And Carrie would marry Charles Gloyd anyway. The year is 1868. Carrie would have a bun in the oven, and then she would leave Charles. Tragically, Charles Gloyd would die of alcoholism, and Carrie would put alcohol on notice. I will take my vengeance on thee, Jack Daniels. No place is safe, Johnny Walker. Knock, knock. It's me, Captain Morgan. Here to steal your soul. Hey, Jose Cuervo. Carrie, that's enough. We get it. You're mad at booze. Roll the intro. Ah, prohibition. The time America thought liberty was anything but a glass of booze. This is one of the many strange tales from a strange period of history. I give you the curious case of Carrie Nation. Have you ever heard of the hatchet granny? What about reading the bi-weekly newsletter, The Smasher's Mail? Stop me if you've ever been to a house nicknamed Hatchet Hall. I'm not even kidding. You can't make this stuff up. Her name, Carrie A. Nation, is trademarked. No, 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 she literally trademarked her name and told everyone it was short for Carrie A. Nation to Prohibition. Get it? You see what she did there? Not bad for a woman who was arrested over 30 times. But let's rewind a bit. To understand Prohibition, you have to understand the major players. You have the Anti-Saloon League, which was a bunch of teetotaling lawyers. They just wanted to ban alcohol. Then you had the Women's Christian Temperance Union, or WCTU for short. The WCTU was a broader group. They were concerned with fair labor laws, women's right to vote, and a host of other issues. The WCTU was also a crafty creator of prohibition propaganda. Let's just say as soon as Carrie found out about the WCTU and its propaganda, she became one of its most active members. Oh, you want an example of the propaganda? Why didn't you speak up earlier? Here you go. Lips that touch liquor shall not touch ours. They even wrote a song about it so they could sing it at the start of meetings. I'm sure this ideology led to some interesting times in the American family. Hey honey, how about a, a kiss? Have you been drinking? No, 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 baby, well, maybe just a little. You're sleeping alone tonight. Well, what am I gonna do now? But drink some more! Party! Woohoo! Shots, shots! My wife hates me! But the party was just getting started for Carrie Nation. The year is 1901. Carrie decided to get married again, this time to a man named David Nation. He was a lawyer, a minister, and a journalist. Carrie loved complicated men almost as much as she hated liquor. Carrie really wanted the nation to be dry, so she decided to take her passion to prayer. And then it happened. She received a vision. She heard music. Carrie, go to Kiowa. I'll stand by you. Oh, and Carrie, one more thing. Bring a rock or something so you can smash things. Yes, Lord. And let's just say Carrie would put the city of Kiowa on notice. I mean, seriously, people were scared. Ah! I don't even drink. Crazy lady, crazy lady, chase me, chase me. Carrie would smash not one, not two, but three saloons. And then a tornado would rip through Kansas and Carrie would see it all as divine approval. Holy smash potatoes. David, I just busted up three saloons in Kiowa. But her husband was unimpressed. Carrie, I'm unimpressed. But don't you see, David, I'm bringing the nation to prohibition. Carrie, if you want to do some real damage, why don't you take a hatchet to them saloons? That is the smartest thing you've ever said to me, David. And Carrie would go into full hatchet mode, or hatchetations as she liked to call them. Carrie would damage saloon after saloon. Then she would get arrested. Carrie, we're gonna let you go, but you gotta promise to stop smashing private property. Hmm, okay. A couple of moments later. Knock, knock. Who's there? Not your beer. Carrie, no, don't do it. <laughs> Carrie's hatchetations once got her arrested four times in a single day, and the press started to take notice. She practically became a media sensation overnight. Get the papers. Hatchet lady enforces prohibition. Smashes up bars. Read all about it. And America was taking notice. You go, girl. 
But Carrie's claim to fame wouldn't last long because there's something you have to know about 1901. The president was William McKinley, and he was a gregarious fella who enjoyed meeting the public. But unfortunately, this was before the Secret Service was tasked with the full-time protection of presidents. At one of the president's events, a man in the crowd waited till he got to the front of the line. Concealed in a handkerchief, he had a gun, and he shot McKinley twice at close range. Despite doctors' best efforts, McKinley would die shortly after. The nation was mourning, everyone, except Carrie, that is. Carrie wasn't mourning, nay, she was celebrating. The president was a closet drinker. I knew he was drinking. That's what he gets for sipping the devil's delight. But the press was unimpressed. Well, folks, this is the end of the show. As my mother always said, no one will buy the cow if you give the milk away for free. So like and subscribe if you want a glass of milk or more content. And I didn't even get to tell you about the time Carrie got booted from England or the time she sold mini hatchets as merch. Get your hatchet, $5. So like and subscribe and we'll see you next time on Timeless Muffin. Remember, history is timeless, but if your muffin lasts longer than a week, you should probably throw it out.